Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. Anthony Hill. And this is Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. Thank you for joining in with us today. We have a new subject that we're, uh, we're going to delve in today. And it's basically called, What Caused You to Leave the Faith? And boy, have we seen a lot of people over the years leave the faith, huh? And man, just the excuses that you get. And, and it's what's amazing to me is that the person you saw that when they were in the faith versus the one you see that's now out of the faith is so unrecognizable in the spirit way, yeah. even in the physical in some kind of way, that you you can't reconcile the two anymore. It's like, how did I know this person? And I don't see them like this no more. I mean, they just, and they don't want to even be around you because you're a reminder of what they used to be. Mm -hmm. And they're angry about that. So um, anyway, the, in the opening comments, which we're going to kind of start now, is this is about forgetting what brought you into the faith in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that which you heard from the beginning, substituting your first love for bitterness and anger, which is what happens a lot of cases. So I want to just throw it over to you and um, start with some opening comments on your thoughts about this when you were putting these scriptures together. Oh, yes, this this is a, a one that kind of like, to me, it fitted right with the previous one we did. Who is your teacher? You know, because the lack of knowing that, then you're not prepared for the many, uh, just say, uh, strongholds or trials or tests that comes along in life that you won't be prepared for will cause you to lead the faith. And the various erroneous teachings can take you away from the faith. Uh, like, uh, I, I never forget the passage how they say, uh, Balaam, mm -hmm. he ran greedily from the faith. You know, greed took him away. So it's so many different things that can take you from the faith. And I think that's uh, what I see is so uh, prevalent um, in, in this, in this uh, society today of those who claim to um, walk in this faith, how they so easily lured away from the faith because of their earthly desires. You know, they, they, they desire to, to prosper and get rich and the things that they have to do in order to get those riches is the very thing that they shouldn't do because they're casting away their first love. Yeah, I, I think um, early on for me, I'm, I'm like you, I was a very, I'm a very observant person. You know, I would sit quiet and just observe this person, that person, not judging, just observing uh, their behaviors, how they conduct themselves. And then over a period of time, I began to see how some of them left the faith. Yeah. And it disturbed me because I viewed those people as like pillars of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And now they're gone for various reasons. Right. And it's not really so much my intent to get in today to all the ways it can happen because it's innumerable, really. Um, but what I want to get, but what I wanted to say in regards to that was early on for me, it scared me when I saw it happen. Mm -hmm. And I took note of that because I said, if, if, if this guy who's been here for years is like a deacon, let's say, and now he's gone, he's shacking up with some other woman other than his wife and, and a case that I knew. I'm like, if that could happen to him. It could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, I was very wet behind the ears when I came into the faith. And I thought, you know, once you get once you get locked into this this belief mm -hmm. with the commandments and Yahshua and all this other stuff, you're in like Flint, as they would say, and, mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to be gone. Right. But then I'm seeing different people having things happen to them. And it really made me take note because then I started to realize, you know, this is not as infallible as I thought it was. And now I didn't have any religious real background as an adult. So to me, this was all new watching all this stuff, but it made me concerned and not taking it for granted. It could happen to me. Yeah. And I think that was a good thing for me 
foundationally speaking, because what it did is it gave me a level of fear that don't get so cocky that you think that nothing can touch you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> there's a lot of things that run through your mind as a young believer. And uh, boy, that got dispelled real quick. And, and I'm thankful for that, even though it was at their expense, but it taught me some lessons. Okay. So then what it comes down to is, well, foundationally, what what is holding you? What's holding you foundationally? And so that's part of what this discussion is going to be about today. We're going to look into on a couple of other points as well. But there's a lot of people that have left the faith. And we know that it says and that the man of sin will not show up until the great falling away comes first. And I'm going to just say this. I've been saying it for the last four or five years. Yahweh told me about five years ago, the great falling away has already occurred. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, it didn't appear to me that it was chronic, mm -hmm. but I did see people falling away. But looking back now, 2020 in hindsight, five years back to where we are now, I'm like, oh, man, was that word relevant? Yes. Because it was progressive in nature. It gets worse and worse as time goes on. So I have the benefit now of looking back at five years from the time he told me that, oh, he was very dead on when he said the great falling away was occurring already, you know, and that there was a famine of the hearing of the word. Not that you can't find Yahweh's word. There's a famine of the hearing. People can't hear the word anymore because they don't want to hear it. Right, right, right. Well, if you don't want to hear the word, how are you going to build a foundation where you can't leave the faith? You got to have that foundation. So as we had said the last time, you know, that in the end times, people will not be able to endure sound doctrine. Oh, yeah. That sound doctrine is your foundation. What underlies this whole structure that Yahweh's building on top of you when he's building this temple. Oh, yeah. Because you are the temple of Yahweh. And in order for him to set his throne, he's got to have a foundation to set it on. Which is those commandments. Righteousness, you know, faith, working together with the word, which is the, the Torah, the, the commandments. So this is kind of where we're going today. So let's go ahead and get into this. So on point number one, the, the discussion is going to be remembering the purpose of your calling, remembering the purpose of the calling. This is what I got out of the scriptures you have provided which is in Numbers chapter 16, verses 8 through 10. And we're going to go ahead and read that now. So breaking in, uh, similar to the last time, we're talking about Moses, only in a little bit of a different way now, which is really interesting. Then Moses, which means to drawing out of the water, said to Korah, which means with intelligence and, and obedience, now I pray, you sons of Levi, is it a small thing? To you that Elohim of Israel, who will rule as Elohim, has separated as different you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to work as a bondservant of the tabernacle, as a dwelling place of Yahweh, and to stand before the congregation as a stated assemblage to serve, to contribute for a place of worship for them. And that has he has brought you near to himself, you and all your brethren, the sons of Levi with you. And are you seeking through worship and prayer the priesthood also? <laughs> Sounds like uh, a coup de gras uh -huh. to me. Uh -huh. So um, this is this set of scriptures is all about, you know, again, remembering the purpose of your calling. Mm -hmm. And when you get away from that, you start having other motives that carry you away into other realms that take you away from what brought you in in the first place. Yeah, right. And this one kind of has an interesting twist, but I'll throw it over to you. Yeah, when 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 um we picked what what uh well when he gave me this subject that you had picked and I chose from that, like I said, I think it tied in with our previous ones. Your teacher, you know, and uh along the way people get promoted 
Korah and was Levite. So Yahweh separated that whole tribe over there for his services. But Moses was still the leader. He was like the high priest. But Korah, in all of his gift that he had, got puffed up for high-minded. Uh, uh, as you just said, you can't get too arrogant about yourself that you can't um, learn nothing from nobody that now you just got it all. And that's where Korah got. And it caused him to lose the faith which he had already had in the beginning. And that was to believe that and to hold fast to the proclamation that they had made to Yahweh at, at Mount. Huh? Oh, don't you speak to us no more. You speak to Moses and all that he say we will do. But how quick did that change for them once they got out there and got their little positions and stuff and was and said that they had the same spirit that Moses had and they can prophesy and they can do all the things that Moses did. But you would you didn't have the leadership quality. You didn't have that relationship with Yahweh like Moses had. But now you claim to have it. You with me? And so they rejected Moses. So if you rejected Moses, you rejected Yahweh also. Yeah. Um, there's so many dynamics to what went on here. Mm -hmm. Because in, on the one hand, in the text, Yahweh separated them as a priesthood for worship service for him. Right. And the people on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. So you already had the delegated authority. But it's sort of like, well, that's not good enough. I, wa I, I want to be a little bit higher up on the totem pole, mm -hmm. which is self-exaltation. Mm -hmm. Well, where did that idea come from? I'll tell you where it came from. It came from Satan himself. Yeah. And most specifically, we go back to the very beginning about the original rebellion, before there was a garden, before there was an Adam and Eve, before there was Moses and a priesthood and all that stuff. What did you have? You had, see, there ain't nothing new under the sun like Solomon says. You know, everything that man do, does is, is in vanity, okay? It's in vain. And he always says, why do man pl plot vain things, you know? Well, Satan is the original one that planted the idea of plotting vain things. Everything he did from the beginning when he fell became vain. Mm -hmm. He knew he was destroyed from the time before man even showed up on the earth. Mm -hmm. So the original rebellion was when Hasatan was dwelling on the earth with a third of the angels. And uh, I'm not going to get into the whole theology of the whole thing. It's kind of technical. But basically, he began to run in his mouth. Running the gums, chopping the, chopping at the people's ears about, you know, I have the authority here on the earth over a third of you angels, and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But if I could do that, I could do more. Mm -hmm. You know, I can. I'm only imagining what the conversation was because it said through the abundance of his merchandising, mm -hmm. he was merchandising his words to those angels, mm -hmm. and he finally convinced them, "Hey, bros, let's do this. I got an idea." Let's ascend up into heaven and let's go ahead and overthrow Yahweh off his throne. I'll sit in the throne and all you hombres will be my main man. And I'm going to give you power like you never knew before. We don't need to be relegated to this earth down here. And by the way, he's going to make a man somewhere down the future in his image, according to his likeness. And he's going to be like him. Give him eternal life. We don't need those jackasses taking over the whole universe and we got to be under their authority. We were here first. Mm -hmm. I, I can only imagine all the conversation. So he convinces the, the angels, the third, to become adversaries like him and they became demons. And we know the story. They ascended into the third heavens and Yahweh cast them back to the earth like a bolt of lighten, lightning and put them back to the former abode where they were in the first place. And so now this has been their habitation. And then man comes along. So this idea of it's not, I, the position I have is not good enough. It's not good enough. I want more. But I'm not going to wait for it. 
I'm going to take it by force. Yeah. I'm going to put myself in a position where I'm self-proclaimed as this leader. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and then that, that that's the point. That now just took you away from the foundation of the faith that you were established in in the first place. Yes, like, Different theology. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just the... Uh, just seal it, what I'm, I'm trying to bring in the points, the different things that can cause you to lose the faith. And right in this passage, even though it doesn't show, pride and lust took right. Korah in all of his house or out of the faith just that quick because they followed him with the greed that he that was within him and the two pride to, to have Moses over him that he wanted to be just equal as Moses and not knowing that okay Moses say okay let's go to Yahweh and then I'll come back here and tell us what to do. Well why could Rock couldn't go to Yahweh to find out what to do? Right. Huh? Right. His pride had done puffed him up and hardened him so hard at that moment and his lust to be uh just as more in the eyes of, of Yahweh as Moses was when he knew he wouldn't jealousy. All of this stuff comes in and it pulls you away from the faith. We really have to watch the different spirits that enter into our hearing, that it penetrates your heart to turn you away from what you know is the right thing to do. Yeah. So now you touched on to something that what hit me was compare Korah to Moses. Mm -hmm. If we can do that. Did Korah have to go through anywhere near what Moses did to get the position that Moses had? He earned every bit of that. You know how hard that was to cross that desert in the first time mm -hmm. over to Midian? And they go up and spend time with Yahweh on the mountain and receive all these difficult instructions. Then go all the way back to the land that wanted to kill you. And take all these people out of there and bring them back to this mountain. And now you upstart. You, you're going to come in now and try to think that you can upstart me and take over my position. Mm -hmm. But but up. but it comes back to the greed, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, you've left your foundation of the faith. You know, in the New Testament, I forget which word it is in the English, but in some of the teachings, I bring it out. Um forgive me, I, I can't remember the actual English word, but in the Greek, it means not to be, not to go beyond the measure that Yahweh has dealt to you. Yeah, the East man not to go. Not to go beyond the measure. So if Yahweh says, I'm going to give you $100, you're not to fire back at him and say, why did you only give me $100? I wanted $150. Mm -hmm. How dare you only give me fifty a $100? Right. No, I gave you $100. I want to see what you're going to do with it. And then if you do right by that hundred dollars, you might get a thousand. Why would you settle for the 50? But your lack of patience in staying in the foundation of the faith where you're grounded as a seed that's to grow and produce a harvest that Yahweh can pick off of and increase you later on is now null and void because of this arrogance of rebellion that Satan started from the beginning. That what you got ain't good enough. You need more than that. So, you know, we're told in another scripture in the New Testament, be careful how you build on another man's work. Well, how is Korah going to build on Noah's work if he becomes in charge? Especially with the arrogance and satanic influence of what he's doing. Because aren't we also told in scripture that rebellion is as witchcraft? And basically, he was indulging in witchcraft. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But we don't think about these things because, like you said, the greed for money, position, authority, power, influence, all those spirits mm -hmm. consume your mind and drown the foundation of the faith that established you in the first place. Exactly. And not being grateful, you know, going back again to what I said about in the opening comments, I learned quickly about all these people that lost their faith. Mm -hmm. And I took note of that real quick. I could be wiped out in no time. I better be careful not to be greedy and think that I'm entitled to more than, than what I should. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong 
with wanting to pursue a higher level of calling with Yahweh. Right. That's noble. There's nothing wrong with that. But you got to be willing to let him bless you to that next level and, and, and increase you when he decides your character, because we talked about this a lot of time, that his name is not just about his name. It's about his character. He wants to build character. You talked about preparing a people for these end times. Well, you've got to have character, man, to stand up and deal with the kind of opposition you're going to have. Yes, sir. It takes years. We talked about this last night on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. It takes years to develop character. We talked about why is it that Yahweh can wave a magic wand and heal somebody of a disease right on the spot, but the mind didn't get healed. Why did not Yahweh not wipe out all the scarring in that mind at the same time he wiped out all the evidence of the disease? Because character, unlike a disease, is something you have to learn. It has to be applied. And the unclean spirits that fog your mind, that prevent you from pursuing that kind of righteous character of the name of Yahweh, can't be attained unless that hindrance is moved out of the way. It takes years to develop this. You're not going to do it overnight just because you plead Jesus and the blood. That ain't good enough to build character. You're going to be tested. So Korah was being tested and he failed the test. And that's something we should take note of when we're pursuits of higher things in our calling or this life. To not to what be anxious for nothing, but content in all things. It, it, it's, it's, it's just an example of the day. It's like, when did Moses stop being the leader? And, and today, when did Yeshua stop being the leader? Exactly. A lot of people just stop following Yeshua. You can't tell me what to do no more. You done freed me. I'm free to do what I want to do. You died. And, you know, and, and yet he cannot live through us. They Not refuse to let no. him live. Yeah, they refuse to let him live. It's, a, it's clear because they won't keep his commandments. They won't allow him to keep the commandments through them. No, because they haven't died for themselves. Right. And so they leave the faith. They leave off if they ever were there. You know, we just talking well, about people that were, thing too. Yeah, we just really focusing on the people that have left, you know, right. that were on the journey and quit. They right. couldn't end They got sidetracked. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and you have to go back to the beginning. How did the teaching start? How did the falling away start? And you can see the teaching started in the beginning. The leaving the faith started in the beginning. And you have to go there and trace it. And you will find the same thing as we're going to see when we get through the rest of the scriptures. It's still going to be happening. After Yeshua has come, came and gone. Right. <laughs> the same thing. And it's still happening to us as we see in it today. You know? And, and so what is it? What is they grabbing on? Uh, uh, so far, as far as I've seen, I've seen pride and lust, you know? And, and as we go down through the scriptures, we're going to find there are other things out there, but the root of them is pride and lust. Right. And it gives birth to all these other uh, uh, things that pull you away. Yeah, it really comes down to what are you focusing on is what you get. Yeah. And that's it. What you focus on is what you get. And if those are the things that you focus on, then you have nothing to complain about because you allowed it. That's what you pursued. That's the seed you sowed in the ground. Now you got to harvest. So you should be happy because that's what you pursued. Mm -hmm. You know, and so what we're trying to say is getting back to that, what you heard from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And what you heard from the beginning was the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. When Israel came out of Egypt and they went to the mountain, they heard the commandments. Yes, That's what they heard from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so what seems, I guess, to be for a lot of people so simple, maybe overly simplistic and elementary is not so much that important, but yet it's the very foundation to your faith. Because as we said the last time, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. 
Well, the word is the Torah, is the commandments. And, you know, if you ain't going to walk in them, you're not his people. And so if you're not his people, then you, you can no longer stay in the faith. And so it's just sad to see that how many people come in in recent times and they're going out the back door as quick as they're coming through the front door. Mm -hmm. And they act as if like everything's so cool, which it is at the time, but little by little they're being cooked. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I can think of a number of people where I could see them sitting there and they're talking all the right things. They're saying all the right things. They're doing all the right things. But then I see a seed of something and I'm like, that's going to be their downfall. And then you try to tell them, you need to pay attention to this. This is not good. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, I'm just dabbling. <laughs> okay, well, that's what Eve did when she was in the garden, mm -hmm. dabbling, mm -hmm. looking over at that tree. I'm like, man, that fruit sure looked good. And Satan is like, come over here. I got some things I want to talk to you about. Forget about the fruit for now. I want to talk to you, you know, and now you're in trouble because you entertain that which Yahweh told you as a command, not a suggestion, as a command. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Don't mess around over there. You're over your head and you don't even understand what you're over your head on. You know, uh, that's interesting how you're saying that now, because. Look at it today. How many uh, have been warned to stay away from certain lifestyles and certain um, activities and certain um, attitudes that they go and they entertain it anyway? Mm -hmm. To this day, they're mm -hmm. still doing it. Mm -hmm. And they justifying it now because the, the uh, punishment don't come right away. Some of the things they do, they give a little punishment right away, the earthly punishment. But I'm talking about the punishment from Yahweh doesn't come right away and it's, and it's being reserved for. Well, isn't that the nature of the prophets? Like we talked about Amos and stuff, because I think in the last time, um, eventually Yahweh told him, or is it in this one? I'm not sure if it's in this one or not. Got so many scriptures, I don't remember anymore. But the point is, with so many of the prophets, um, it's the same thing, is that Israel doesn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. And then the prophet says, if you don't listen, then Yahweh's going to sell you into slavery. Mm -hmm. Well, you might have several generations of people that lived after that statement. Right. They lived a regular life. Right. They lived, they died, another mm -hmm. family came up in their place. Then all of a sudden, three, four, five hundred years later, then the enemies come down and besiege them and there are people no more mm -hmm. and they're scattered into the nations. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's kind of like the IRS, you know, you might get some warnings, you know, but then if you don't heed them warnings, they may not come down on you tomorrow. Yeah. But the penalties and the interest are accruing and then there comes a day you get a knock on the door. Yeah. And, and now you got to really pay. So. That's part of the delusion, isn't it? That's part of the, the self-centered security or false security that a person gives themselves. Ah, well, nothing happened, so I'll indulge in it a little bit more. Instead well, the thing. more, yeah, and the more you're doing that, the more you're getting away from the faith. Yeah, instead of taking the opportunity to, to fix it. Right. You know, they, they continue in it. Yeah, so and you get cocky. You're getting away with yeah, it. you get cocky. You think you're getting away with it. So, you know, self-appointed leaders is, is nothing new. It happens... In religion and it happens in in government um, it even happens as in marriages right. you know uh, one person abdicates their responsibility another one takes over so uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next point point number two what I got out of the scripture what you gave which was first uh, Kings 12 18 to 22 is not understanding your anger can cause a split mm -hmm. not understanding that your anger can cause a split so in 1 Kings 12, starting in verse 18, it says, Then King Rehoboam, meaning a people has enlarged, sent Adoram, which means father of height, who is in charge of the revenue as a tax burden of forced labor. I found that to be interesting in the Hebrew, as a tax burden of forced labor. So apparently this is designed to oppress people. Mm -hmm. 
But all Israel stoned him with stones and he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste and courageous strength to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion to break away from just authority. That's mm -hmm. what that rebellion means mm -hmm. in Hebrew, to break away from just authority against the house of David to this day. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> excuse me, it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam, the people will contend, had come back. They sent for him and called him to the congregation and made him king by inducting him into royalty over Israel. This is the northern mm -hmm. 10 tribes, which it was prophesied he would become leader over. Right. There uh, was none who followed the house of David, which is on Rehoboam's side, but the tribe of Judah only. Verse 21, and when Rehoboam, meaning a people as enlarged, came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, which, which means the son of the right hand, and 180,000 chosen men who were youthful, who were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, that he might restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the sons of Solomon, which means of being peaceful. Verse 22. But the word of Elohim came to Shemamiah, Yah has heard, which is what that means, mm -hmm. the man of Elohim saying, speak to Rehoboam, meaning a people that has enlarged the son of Solomon, peaceful king of Judah, to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, the son of the right hand, to, and to the rest of the people saying this. Thus says Yahweh, you shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. So Yahweh is saying this directly is now, this is what I want. Therefore, they obeyed the word of Yahweh and turned back according to the word of Yahweh. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, when I went through this, when I was staying on the uh, term of what is it that can... Um, turn you away from the faith. And this thing started with Solomon. Right. The wisest man that ever lived turned away from the faith through his desire to have all these different women and to please them. And through him caused all of this stuff to trickle down through Israel because Solomon under the... Uh, desire to please his many wives begin to inspect hard labor on Israel. And so now Solomon, uh, 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 the prophecy go to Jeroboam that he going to get 10 of those kingdoms to him, but because of the, the promise to David, he going to leave uh, the kingdom of, 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 of Judah uh, to um, of David, that David's um, Jerusalem to Solomon's son. You know, he ain't going to take that away from him. He's going to leave that to him. And so now uh, they run into Rehoboam, Solomon's son. He's just trying to keep the thing going, you know, but he ain't got privy to the punishment that has done, um, been given down through Yahweh. And, and so Jeroboam, uh, he done got the news, so he's coming back now. And the people say, okay, yeah, Jeroboam was pretty good. So we're going to make him king, and we're going to listen to him. Now, Rehoboam say, now nah, I'm the king because I took my father's place. And all of y'all got to come back. Mm -hmm. Not happening. But my point in this, this passage here was just to look back and say, man, if we don't get it right, huh? then just like you say, punishment can be delayed to come down. And if we don't pass that information down because Solomon wanted to kill Jeroboam because he knew what had done happen. He got this much wisdom that he done got word that Jeroboam is finna get them kingdoms. So he finna try to kill him, sort of like um, Saul was going to do with David. Maybe if Jeroboam would have stayed there, Yahweh would have made it so Solomon couldn't have did nothing to him as he did with David. But David took off running also. And so, but when they come back, now Rehoboam ain't got no knowledge of this stuff happening that, that I know in scripture. So he's going to do something, but Yahweh gets in his way. Huh? And he listens and heeds and turn back and don't do that thing. How many people will take heed, 
huh? To not do something when the word of Yahweh tells you not to do that thing. Because Solomon evidently with all his wisdom didn't, didn't, take, didn't take that, that opportunity to do that. In the end of his life, he, he, he later repented, but the punishment had already done been went out. The only thing that kept him in where he was was the promise to his father David that he'll have a light burning. You and, know, yeah, go ahead. Keep on. And so how would I say it? Um the desire for, for women, uh adultery, fornication out of worship took Solomon away from the faith. Mm -hmm. If it can get him who we think that it can't get, exactly. get us. Right. You know, so I just use these scriptures just to make a point of what is it that causing cause you to lead the faith. And whoever listened to this video, if you left out and you think you found something better, what was it that made you think you found something better? Yeah, th this this whole section here to me is very dicey. Yes. Because you can kind of split this in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of hairs to split. So um what's coming to my mind is you know the scripture says to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. Solomon was given a lot. Started out good. He started out yeah. good. <clears throat> yeah. But irrespective right. of that. So much is required mm -hmm. because you, he was given much, much was required. And because he faulted, mm -hmm. it caused a split in the whole kingdom mm -hmm. between the northern tribes and the, and the southern tribe. And there's, a, there's another part here that, that gets dicey. And we like to, you know, not we, many people like to say the law is dead. You believe in Jesus, the law is dead. Well, if, if, if the law is dead, why do we see the consequences of breaking the law still to this day? So what struck me was the concept of the sins of the fathers visit to the third and the fourth generation. So if you go on the concept that Solomon was given much and much was required and he didn't fulfill that, then the consequence that was required was going to be great. Mm -hmm. And so what Rehoboam did was Rehoboam inherited the consequence of the sin of his father. Yes, and there wasn't anything that anybody was going to be able to do about it. Yahweh declared it. He consecrated it. And it was going to be a split. And there's not going to be any discussion about it. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about that, I thought, Wow, this is some interesting dynamics because how many times in my younger days did I do things as a father that caused my kids to inherit a consequence of something that I did, knowingly or unknowingly, it doesn't really matter. I think there are times when you do things out of ignorance, Yahweh looks the other way and he doesn't allow a consequence. As a matter of fact, I think that probably happens quite frequently. And that's his mercy and his compassion and his long suffering on us because of the blood of Messiah. However, there are times that we do suffer consequence. And that comes back to the character building thing. How are you going to deal with this? How are you going to handle this? Because it can take you on two different roads. It can take you down the road where you stay in his covering and his righteousness or it can take you on the road where you lose the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, in the case of Jeroboam and Rehoboam, they had no choice. They were going to suffer the consequence of a split kingdom due to what Rehoboam's father Solomon had done. So in our life, how many times have we done things that brought consequences on our kids or other people in our life of things that we did that we didn't repent of. And so you wind up getting uppity and into an attitude over their behavior, which they in a way don't have any control of mm -hmm. because the sin is imputed to them now. Yeah. 
That gets dicey. So sometimes you're dealing with a person who's being rebellious with you and you don't know why. And it may be because they inherited a sin, which turns into rebellion from somebody above them that they inherited it from. And you're now suffering the repercussions of their in the relationship of that person's rebellion. Yes, I, I can see that. And on the, on, the, on, the, on the way I was looking at it is, will it cause you to leave the true? Ultimately, that's the question. And, and the test came between Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Right. Not the war against each other, uh -huh. but to sit down and receive the word of Yahweh graciously. And seemingly they did so up to that point, you uh -huh. know, and, and, and they just went off and they didn't make war with one another because the house divided ain't going to stand no way. And they already split, but Yahweh going to bring them back together because Jeroboam already got the prophecy that it was going to happen, yeah, right. you know. But um, for that time being, he know his place, mm -hmm. but he wasn't the one predicting the war. It was Rehoboam didn't have the message. Jeroboam had the 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 uh the message of what was going on, you know. And so Rehoboam, I I give him the credit in that he listened to that prophet. Right. How many today will listen to that prophet? Don't do that, you know. And they go off anyway and do what you tell them not to do. And I know you got many stories about people doing the oh. very thing that you want them not to do uh -huh. because you didn't have, you probably didn't see what was um, the reason it was going to happen to them. Oh, but through your experience, yeah. you knew it was going to happen because you've right. seen it before right. happen to experience other people. Is a good yeah. Mm -hmm. As we talked about the last time, and that's what yeah. we're doing with these yeah. with these discussions we're having. We're not, I don't, you know, people going to get angry, or whatever, and probably assume we're trying to teach them. Well, hopefully, you get a teaching, but not from me. It's from Yahweh, right? But well, that's the thing. The word is still the word. Right. Truth is still truth because it's all truth is parallel. Right. If you don't like the faces you see that it's coming from. It's not our problem. That's right. That's your problem. Exactly. So you're just rejecting truth because of what you see physically in front of you. Eh, you know, and when, you're gonna have to work that one out. And when you brought that up the other day, I'm like, I didn't read it, so I knew I had to go further yeah. and read that it because was the story. it didn't stick to me. Yeah. I, no matter how many times I read these different books, yeah. you know, I can't say that I can retain everything oh, in them. I no, have to go back no, and no, see it, and I'm like. No. Why did I ask Yahweh, why did you um, make me pick these scriptures? And he said, it wasn't about them. It was about King Solomon. Yeah. Because everybody looks up to him like that. I'm no respecter of person. Right. If you sin, you're going to get the, the, the punishment, what I declare you're going to get for that sin. And, 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 and um, so for the life of me, I can't understand why these people are teaching that because you sure died for them and you know they can do what they want to do, you know, and they under grace. Why do you teach that? Solomon had more power and more clout with Yahweh than any of us got today. You know, our clout come through Yeshua and it's because of what we did that Yeshua had to lay his life down that we can exist today. It's him. It's, he's the only reason that we have our beings. Yeah. And yet we claim that, whoa, he died and we can go ahead on and that sin ain't going to be put on us. Oh, yeah. Ask King Solomon. Yeah. If you want to understand any of this stuff, you got to go back to the roots. You got to go back. John. You got to go back to the, the foundation. It, your teaching will cause you to lose, lose, uh, leave the faith. Yeah. Um, and parting on the Jeroboam thing, mm -hmm. um, after all that happened, he goes and he builds two temples and fills them with idols. No one better. No one better. What caused him to lead the faith? Maybe I should have focused on him, but I think he was showing me something. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like I said, there's different, uh -huh. it's dicey. There's a lot of different ways that you can mold and shape it and cut through this and cut through that. And that's just, you know, 
that's that's kind of what I was getting out of that set of texts. But we can't belabor that all day. So point three, um, what I got out of the scriptures that you provided, which was First Timothy verse one eight through ten, is the commandments constrain you from strain mm -hmm. from the faith. Mm -hmm. The commandments constrain you from strain from the faith. And um, so I'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and read, starting in verse 8. But we know that the law of Moshe and the Gospels as a prescription is good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yes. Morally valuable and virtuous. In other words, virtuous means strength. It means power. Mm -hmm. It means authority. Mm -hmm. Again, coming back to the name that represents authority, who delegates it to you. Yes. Well, he can't delegate authority to you and power if you are rebellious right. against his commandments, yeah. not truly, uh, if one uses it lawfully. And that's the key, because we do know and we have talked in the past about those leaders that don't use the law lawfully. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're of a Nicolaitan kind of concept. And Yahshua says he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. With legitimacy, according to the rules it lists. Mm -hmm. So stay in context. Right, right. Don't go outside of that and start adding. You know, the Torah says, don't add to the Torah. Don't take away, you know. Verse 9, knowing this, that the law of Moses and the Gospels as a prescription is not made for a righteous person who is holy and equitable in character, but for the lawless who is a Gentile not subject to Torah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is in the Greek, mm -hmm. translated into the English. Mm -hmm. And I've had some people write to me angry that I translate this. I said, go into the Strong's Concordance mm -hmm. and see if you don't see it there. Because mm -hmm. if you don't believe him, you shouldn't believe any of the scriptures because all the translations are based on his, tra his translations of the original languages. Right. But, you know, people don't want to hear it. And insubordinate, unsubdued, and unruly for the wicked, lacking respect for the seriousness of the commandments and for the sinners. Mm -hmm. That's some strong words there. Mm -hmm. And for the unholy and profane, who cross the doorway of heathenism for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, mm -hmm. as a person given over to excessive sexual depleasures, for sodomites. Men who defile themselves with men. For kidnappers, men who make other men into their footstools. I think this is an interesting one. For liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing that is contrary, that is uh, repugnant in nature to sound uncorrupt doctrine. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in them verses. Oh, yeah. Those are good verses, man. Oh, yes, it is. Because... All of those out there who say the law is how how they say it uh, a curse. A curse. All of those who say the commandment curse. is curse. Right. Well, which commandment caused you to lead the faith? Or was it one of those fornicated? The fornicator is that a law? Huh? Mm -hmm. The lie is that a law? That's the one you telling that caused you to lose the faith? Because if you ain't keeping those, then you definitely have left this faith right here. I don't know what faith you professing, but the law that we keeps keeps you in this faith because the law that you are fighting against, it was made for you to tell you what's going to happen yeah, to it's you. Telling you it's for the unrighteous. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. telling you it's gonna happen, but for the righteous, no, it wasn't made for the righteous mm -hmm. because it, you 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 it, you're not over there to catch it, telling you not to do what you're doing. You know that's funny that you said it that way because in actuality, it's made for all of mankind. Yes, because Ecclesiastes tells us that. Yes, it doesn't say it was made for the Jew; it was made for mankind. Yeah. And the reason why it's made for all of mankind because mm -hmm. Yahweh says what there is none that are righteous. No. All have fallen short of the glory of Yahweh Elohim. Yes. All are sinners. Yes. So that's why the law and the commandments is made for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Ecclesiastes says, for this is the duty of mankind to keep the commandments of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you leave the faith? Did you leave it? If you left it 
and you you just strolling through the internet and run across this video, was it for another woman? Hmm. And what and what kind of commandments is she going to impute to you that you got to stay under? Yeah. It may very well be that her commandments are you can't keep these commandments and stay in this faith. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay with me, you're going to have to go against these commandments. He already left them. To go yeah. over there to her. Right. So yeah. these commandments keep people from coming to the faith as well. Wife, if you left your husband. Yeah. Husband, if you left your wife. Right. Just face it up. This is what you did. Mm -hmm. you, this is what took you out of the faith. If you were in this faith, we just talking to the ones that were in this faith. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're trying to come into this faith, avoid these things. Right. You know, lying and whoremonging and stealing. Uh, all of these things causes you to leave the faith. Right. And we, we started that in the beginning with Korah. They just want to take what somebody else has. Right. They don't want what they have. They want more. You know? And we walk around this life, our eyes are never full. They, they just want more. They want more. They preach it on the TV. Oh, you don't have enough. If you don't have all of this, then you're not in good standards with him. And you're not pleasing him. So you need to put your money in the slot machine and pull the lever so that you can get some more to prove that you got faith. Mm -hmm. Show me you got faith if you're keeping these commandments. There ain't but 10 of them. Yeah, yeah, start there. Yeah, just start. Start there. And show me that. But all of these other things are pulling you away from the faith in Yeshua. They're pulling you away because you're running out there and you are defiling yourself and you're becoming corrupt. And there's so many uh, scriptures or stories throughout the Bible that tells us about these things. Uh, Paul writes that these things were written for our learning, that we don't lust after these things that they did. You know that we don't do these things. They were written for our ammunition. That we don't lust after these things. And, and yet, that same spirit enters into so many and corrupts us. And we'll walk around as though we, we are not corrupted, knowing that we are. Yeah, You know what's interesting to me is I've never heard anybody who's antinomian, in other words, anti-law, mm -hmm. will say just the Ten Commandments, keep it simple. I've never heard anybody say to me, you're not going to heaven if you refuse to make an idol. Mm -hmm. You're not going to heaven if you refuse to bow down and worship. You're not going to heaven if you refuse to use the name of Yahweh. You're not going to heaven if you, ref if you refuse to stop keeping the Sabbath. You're not going to heaven if you refuse to dishonor your mother and father. You're not going to heaven if you steal. You're not going to heaven if you lie. You're not going to heaven if you commit adultery. You're not going to heaven if you're not going to bear false witness against your neighbor. Where has anybody ever said that by keeping those laws and refusing to go against them, you're not going to heaven? Where is that bore out in the scriptures? Show me where it says that. Yeah, that's what they teach. That's what they teach. But the only one that they really so prejudice against and hateful is the seven day Sabbath. Yeah. Well, and by the them, commandment. Yeah, by them uh rejecting that one, they fall prisoners yeah. to the rest of them. Right. right. To break them. Mm -hmm. You got adulterers in the church, liars and Thieves all sit up in there all day long, you know, and, and their time is so far spent in there right. trying to find more ways to raise money mm -hmm. and not save souls. Right. It, it, it's sad. Yeah, and, and so, you know, it's interesting that Jeroboam ended up exactly. rebelling and breaking and taking him away from the unity that the northern tribes and the southern tribes were supposed to have. Wasn't supposed to be a north and a south. They're supposed to be one, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sin leads you down roads that 
we just like to just ignore that we're even going down a road like that. Mm -hmm. We think we're just so in control of our lives. And I know for me that the older I get and the longer I've been in this thing, I, the only control I got is the control that Yahweh gives me, the permission to decide I'm going to not give in to the wrong thing and take me out of the faith, you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, verse 15, we didn't cover this. Oh, along with point number three, I'm sorry, is 1 Timothy 5, 15. I forgot we had a couple of sub points here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So what I got out of verse 15 that you provided was our carnal nature is always looking for an excuse to dominate us. Mm -hmm. So the verse is, for some have already turned aside, deflecting to go after as going back to Satan, the accuser. Mm -hmm. And that sure seems to be the repetitive pattern that we see over and over again. You're in the world. We see them in the world. They come out of the world or they come out of their church. They come to the faith. They're here for a little while. And then they back out again, back out to the streets. Never questioning. What is it that drawing me away from the right way? And how do you get a taste of both worlds? And you decide that this other world you came out of, you're going right back in again. Do, can you really say that your mind is more sound back out there again? Your finances, your relationships, your family, you know, everything else in life is, is more sound than it was when you were in the faith. Because I can see the torment on the people that we knew that I ain't in here anymore. Mm -hmm. You can see that you don't even have to listen to them. You can see it in their face. Mm -hmm. They're in torment. Mm -hmm. But they ain't going to admit that. So um, I think, uh, oh, and we got another one. Point three, First Timothy uh, 6, 3 through 6. Quickly, self-knowledge leads to self-righteousness, and then we leave the faith. That's what I got out of what you chose here. So if anyone teaches in verse 3, otherwise, different doctrine and does not consent to wholesome, uncorrupt, true doctrine of words, even the words of divine expression of Messiah, our Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, <coughs> excuse me, and to the doctrine which accords with Elohimness or holiness. He is proud, envelops with smoke of self-conceitedness, knowing nothing but is obsessed with a diseased appetite with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, ill will, distractions, strife, quarreling, reviling, vilification against Yahweh, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of mutual irritations of men, of corrupt as rotten through minds and destitute, that is kept back by fraud from the truth, which is the Torah, right? Who supposes, uh, who suppose that holiness is a means of gain as a money-making acquisition from such withdraw yourself. Verse six. Now, Elohimness with contentment which is self-satisfaction of sufficiency is great gain. That's the end. That's the end of that. I'm saying everything. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that's the end of this. Uh, you're going to bloviate in the closing comments, but this section you can elaborate on. No, let's go to closing. You want to go to closing? Uh, so I, I just want to say that in this sec series of texts that when you go with inside yourself, when you withdraw with inside yourself, you should be able to feel a spirit of strife and contempt. Mm -hmm. I feel it all the time. And that, yeah. Well, it's one thing when you feel it knocking on the door. It's another thing if you open it. Right. But the presence of that strife is a sign mm -hmm. that something is out of order. And that should alert you. And if you dispel that and you pretend it's not there and you brush it away, well, then that's to your own demise. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're going to closing. Oh, yes, uh, I, man. Oh, man. I got so much out of this one. Let and, it go. You know, I'll, I'll abdicate minds to give you the I'm, free time. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to make it short and cut it real short because you said something that was really profound. You know, I was really focused on 
the various things that can pull you out of the faith, you know, and they all line up with the commandments. But like you, I see a lot of people that used to be in the faith. Like when I first came in and I started telling people what I believe, they say, oh, I used to believe that, but I found out that I didn't have to do all of that. Right. And I wasn't never compelled to ask them, well, what was it that you found out? That's you know? a ludicrous statement. Uh, I don't have to do all of that. Right. Well, hold on now. What you're doing out there, you got to do all that. I, I, I don't want to go over there and do what he's doing because yeah, right. I, I know what's over there. Right. So I've been there. And if I've been called out of that, yeah. why am I going back to it? You uh -huh. know, if I was called, if I ever made a statement, he called me away from that. Yeah. Why would I go back to it? Uh -huh. Then that means that he really didn't call me away. And I lied and I followed the wrong. Now, who am I listening to now to send me back over there? So I've never been compelled to wonder, but I can hear the enemy act. Don't, if you're seeing them prospered away and they're getting all the promotions on the job and they say they believe this and they do that and, and, and uh, they really don't keep the commandments or they can compromise the commandments and they get that. And I'm like, um, no, I, I really don't think about that because I know who my teacher is, you know? And where I'm teaching is the way I'm going. But if I stop going this way, then that what I profess that I had faith in, I got to profess that I don't believe that no more. So how can I say I believe him and over here and then leave off from where I say he's bought me, right? In the road that he's put me on and then get over here and go back over there and still say I'm with him. I can't prove that. There's no way I can prove it. So, no, he's not over here and over there. Mm -hmm. He's only in one place. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where people are. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. he said y'all going to say that. Oh, he's over here. Come over here. Oh, he's in the desert. Come over here. Oh, he's on the housetop. Oh, he's in the mountaintop. They said it was going to be said, and I'm hearing that. And not only I hear it, I'm seeing it because they got so many different places saying that he's there. But how many of them are keeping his commandments? Right, that's a question. It, we get to your, your Revelation series and we get in there, they say, um, blessed are those that do his commandments and have the faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. it, them the blessed ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so how many of them are doing that? Are even teaching that? What is it that cause you to leave the faith. You just pick them out. There's a lot of things we covered in there. And I'm sure if you left the faith, one of those got you. Those were my closing comments. So as we said in the beginning, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Mm -hmm. So the question is, which word are you hearing? Because yeah. there's a word in here and there's a word out there. Mm -hmm. And so for all of the people, they're going to all have to make a decision. Which one are you putting your faith in? And whichever one that is, that's your foundation. And that's the one you're going to stick to. And that's the one you're going to have to follow. And that's the one you're going to be the bond servant to. Okay. And so um, we're told in scripture that don't you know that you are the temple of the living Yahweh Elohim? And I've done some teachings on that. It's just up on YouTube. Um, if Yahweh can't sit on the throne of your temple inside your body, which is the temple of Yahweh, and if you can't hear it from the inside, but you're hearing it from the outside, there's something wrong with that one. Yeah. Now, I should preface that by saying that if another man of Elohim or woman of Elohim comes and says something to you and it's a witness to you and it agrees with the one that's inside of you that's speaking to you from the inside out, not from the outside in, you're good. Because that's a confirmation that what you heard first from the beginning on the inside is correct. 
So you should always be hearing from what you heard from the beginning, which comes from the inside, not from the outside. Because it's not about what your natural ears are hearing. It's about what the inner man is hearing in between the noise. Because right. there's a lot of noise out there. Yes, and all that noise is designed to create different frequencies to throw you off and make you dizzy about which voice you should be hearing. So it's about getting back to realizing I'm the temple where Yahweh dwells, where Yahshua dwells, the Father and the Son. And I got to hear it from the inside. Stop pursuing the hearing from the outside. Yeah. Unless it agrees with what you already heard from the beginning on the inside. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense? So with that said, we want to thank you all again for joining us for an hour and a couple minutes, whatever. We hope that this message blessed you as it blesses us. And um, anybody that has any comments or suggestions for other subjects, feel free to shoot it your way. In the meantime, until next time, Shalom in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach.